and welcome to this short introduction to my Chopin a tempo recording. It's the fourth part of my big a tempo project. First part was about Ludwig van Beethoven, the second part about Franz Liszt, the third part about Schumann, and now it's the Etudes Opus 10 by Frédéric Chopin that I recorded. I would like to give an account of the reasons why I decided to include that work uh, into my uh, tempo project. I would also like to give some insight into the background of the interpretation. And I would like to say a few words about the location where we recorded that work. Chopin's Etudes, Opus 10, are an important work when it comes to historical tempo. Chopin published and composed the Etudes only about 15 years after the invention of the metronome. And the metronome markings that he gave for each of the 12 pieces were a topic of discussion already in the 19th century. The reason for this is the same as for many other cases. It is the fact that these markings suggest a tempo that is excessively and questionably fast. It actually is a perfect example of metronome markings that even the most accomplished pianists do not really take seriously, and this for perfectly good reasons. If we compare prominent recordings of the etudes with the actual metronome markings, we find significant differences. Let's take the famous recording by Maurizio Pollini from 1972 as an example and look at number six, for instance. Pollini plays that piece at a tempo around dotted crotchet 36. Chopin's marking says dotted crotchet 69. So Pollini's tempo is basically half the tempo that Chopin's marking seems to suggest. That is the most obvious example out of Opus 10. There are other examples that are also significantly slower, but not quite half speed. As I said, these metronome markings were criticized already in the 19th century. Theodore Kullak, for instance, talks about them in his edition of the Chopin Etudes from 1880. He says, there was a time when the ability to execute passages in the most extremely rapid tempo served as a chief mark of virtuosity. The faster, the more admirable. Czerny always gave in his school books metronome signs whose actual performance would have produced, in the best of cases, music box effects. And then Kulak states regarding Chopin, an altogether too rapid performance deprives the listener of the possibility of following attentively the architectural construction. In the case of Chopin, such a deprivation is indeed a pity. One can never play Chopin beautifully enough therefore never play his music too fast. His music is sinned against in this respect to an incredible extent, just as is that of J.S. Bach. Now, of course, hearing that prominent historical criticism and realizing that outstanding performances such as Polini's do not follow the given metronome markings by far sometimes, that evokes some suspicion in terms of whether or not this could be a case 
where the double beat option for metronome markings could be applied. So that option that, as a result, actually halves the tempo. On a general level, it's the same pros and cons that I presented in my general introduction to metronome markings and the entire double beat theory. And I recommend to watch that presentation as a general background. As far as I'm concerned, I really do think that it is legitimate to seriously consider the double beat option for Chopin's etudes. And there is something else that confirmed me in that context. There are a lot of testimonials by pupils of Chopin who studied with him and talk about his teaching. We also know that many of these pupils did actually study the etudes with Chopin. There is an excellent book that offers pretty much the complete collection of those testimonials, Chopin vu par ses élèves, or Chopin as seen by his pupils in English by Jean-Jacques Eigeldinger, a book that I highly recommend. Now, these pupils that are quoted in this book were certainly good pianists, but still, I would say, on a normal level and not on a particularly outstanding level. Now, of course, if that excessive tempo for the etudes was indeed what Chopin had in mind, problems with mastering that tempo would most definitely have occurred with his pupils and would most definitely have been discussed with Chopin. Now, looking at the testimonials, not even a remark about the quickness can be found. None of those pupils discuss or even, even mention the sheer difficulties of executing that kind of speed. Difficulties that are obvious and that simply do come up if one aspires to play these etudes according to Chopin's metronome marking, if these metronome markings were meant to be as we understand them today. So that is really a striking fact. Of course, in view of this, the question seems to be legitimate are these metronome markings then intended as double beat? Do they actually represent half the tempo than we think they do? And did Chopin's pupils follow a slower aesthetic? That was my motivation to simply try it and to offer an interpretation of these pieces that takes the double beat understanding of metronome markings as a point of reverence. So again, as with Beethoven and Schumann, it's the voice of music that is featured as a contribution to the mysteries connected to Chopin's metronome markings. It is interesting to see in that context that there comes some sort of confirmation from the music itself. In such an interpretation, small details suddenly become significant when they are executed in this tempo. The demi-semic quavers in number 12, for instance, are really there, and they add such a nice rhythmical energy to the piece or the incredibly rich harmonies and alterations in number six, the piece I already talked about, or number three, that becomes a true lento manon troppo this way and allows a full accelerando in the middle part, which is demanded 
by Chopin. I won't talk about the pieces in greater detail now, that would go too far in that context, and maybe I will do that on some other occasion. Just see the music and the recording in correlation to my basic statements about metronome markings. And of course, first of all, just enjoy the music and maybe even have a look at the score, if you like. The recording took place at the famous Hercules Saal in Munich, Germany. And coincidentally, it is actually that hall where Maurizio Pollini did his famous recording in the 1970s. The hall is lovely and I'm really very pleased with how it sounds. Now I hope you will enjoy the music and all the richness that lies within those 12 masterpieces by Chopin. Thank you and see you soon. Please subscribe to my channel, like and share the video and ring the bell to get notified.